One thing which is odd is that there's a missing chapter, which is EMS in all the books about electronic music. People do not know what incredible mechanical adventures we were up to. I don't know quite how I came into electronic music itself. I like doing experimental music by recording sounds. And it was very early on that I realized that cutting tape was a hopeless procedure and that really this had to be done in a more sensible way. And this was the beginning of a digital age. And this was the first computer in the world in a private house. Sputney, where Peter Sanoviev has a hobby which is strictly for boffins. He keeps it in his garden shed, and it's called Digital PDP 8 Oblique S. Yes, it's a computer, and it has a hobby too, composing music. Peter helps with the ideas, but the actual performance is all digital's work. Digital computers were already used in process control in factories. That's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to process control for different sounds so that one would follow another or a combination of them would be heard together. He wanted to make, well, innovative music, sounds that nobody had made before. Um, Peter Sanofias was, uh, was using computers in a way that would become commonplace in the, in the mid-80s. He was doing this almost 20 years earlier with equipment that was large and unwieldy, not designed for the purpose. And he and his co-engineers were, were, were developing things that had never been even considered up to that point, let alone considered possible. Many of the things that uh, Peter did were really quite advanced. Peter Zinoviev is both a composer and an electronics whiz kid. A decade ago, he was already developing the hardware of synthetic music, while at the same time venturing into the uncharted music potential of computers. His synthesizers have achieved commercial success, though he would probably prefer the musical success, so far largely denied him. And we formed this new company, EMS. When I got together with Zanavio and Cockerell uh, towards the end of the 60s, one of the decisions made was that there wasn't enough electronic concert music going on in England. A few miles down the Thames at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, the first concert in Britain given by a computer. The next item, Partita for Unattended Computer by Peter Zinoviev, is a true live performance in the sense that no magnetic tape is being used at all. Furthermore, the computer has a choice at various stages in the procedure, and the piece therefore comes out different every time it's played. The performance you're about to hear is therefore unique and unrepeatable. First of all, checks are made to see that the composition is correctly loaded into the computer. The computer is started and will carry out the performance unattended. The audience is a capacity one, but the computer's performance didn't meet with universal approval. The Financial Times said, technically, it may be a triumph of skill and knowledge, but what we heard resembled the dreariest kind of neo Fabian drawn out to inordinate length. What we were making was very, very simple sounds. It's... things like that. Um, on the other hand, if you were a technician, you'd realize that into those simple sounds had gone a huge amount of effort. The, dip, the computer was actually con controlling sound equipment, the sound equipment was controlling an amplifier, and out it came all by itself. This was incredible technology for those days. And I've got, I've got the reviews, some of which were a bit scathing, you know, and some of them were saying, well, it's, it's an interesting noise, but it's not music. <laughs> Oh, the whole purpose of EMS was to pay for Peter's computer studio. That was his first love. He thought he could uh, pay for it by making miniature versions of the things he had in his studio that could be sold. A lot of fumbles, but that's recorded. 
Zinoviev is intrigued by the computer because it has, in theory, the capacity to introduce into synthetic music the spontaneous, unpredictable quality of the human player. He now types instructions into the computer about how it should juggle the notes it has remembered and replay them in a semi-random fashion, speeding some up, slowing others down. On a visual display, he can see the original music data prior to being modified by the computer. All seems ready now to hand over to the computer. Right now, let's transform it. edge and neither the people who came nor ourselves knew what we could do with with this apparatus because we had very very revolutionary equipment and a very revolutionary studio we attracted top people of all kinds as a result of which they started adopting some of the ideas that had up to that point been very much in the sort of the boutique electronic studio when EMS was at its height, we were at the very front of technology, really not just in electronic music, but of all technology. But our studio had never had any support from the government whatsoever. And it seems such a shame looking back on it that we were foremost in the world, and yet in the end became famous for rather pathetic little synthesizers. It's either Peter or Tristram wrote a letter to the Times offering the studio to the nation. It was worth quite a lot of money by, by this point. It, I, maybe electronic music wasn't well enough understood in Britain. No one took up his offer. And so, um, sadly, when the EMS went bankrupt and Peter then became really strapped for cash, the, the equipment was stored, I think, uh, at the National Theatre in what Peter told me was a dungeon. I guess it was just a basement. And it had flooded. It had been chopped to pieces with wire cutters and, and saws and there was a leak and rain was pouring on it. It was heartrending. Anybody can make electronic music now. It is used everywhere and the formidable obstacles which we had to even make the simplest sounds like in the beginning by editing tape or by having these huge juggernaut bits of equipment is, thank goodness, gone forever. I think that what we can do now with computers is to start again with exactly the same aims that EMS had, which is this, let me put it in a sentence. It's to be able to analyze the sound, put it into sensible musical form on a computer, to be able to manipulate that form and recreate it in a musical way. And that is just now, I wish I could find somebody to work with.